Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for the very first webinar in Volusion's new success series, Grow. So Grow with Volusion is a new series that's all about helping Volusion merchants like yourself do that very thing, grow. Grow your business, grow your sales, and ultimately grow your success. In today's discussion, we're going to be talking about conversion rates. More specifically, we're going to look at some of the most common design conversion mistakes you might be making with your own store and how you can fix them. Our hope is that by the end of this webinar, you'll be able to walk away with some really actionable next steps you can implement on your website to help boost your sales and create a better experience for your customers. Because that's really what it's all about, creating a better experience and you know, growing your sales. So we're your host for today. My name is Wes and I'm the creative director at Studio. Studio is a growth focused design and marketing agency and we work solely with e-commerce brands, essentially to help them grow their businesses. And I'm your other host, Jessica, and I'm a web designer with over six years of experience creating e-commerce store designs that increase site sales and conversions. As Wes mentioned, at Studio, we work solely with e-commerce brands and focus heavily on growth and conversions. We are very proud of the fact that, on average, we've helped businesses increase revenue by 90% year over year. Over time, we've had the pleasure of working with some well-known brands, including Carly Davidson, Yankee Candle, and Bob Ross. Yeah, so before we dive in and look at how to fix any conversion mistakes you might be making on your sites, Let's talk for just a second about conversion rates. So like really quickly, what are they? How do you calculate them? And what conversion rate should you be aiming to hit? Simply put, a conversion rate is the percentage of your site visitors that actually make a purchase. A conversion rate could be tied to a specific goal, like if you're testing how many customers make their way to a product page or add an item to the cart. But really, when it comes to e-commerce, it's all about purchases. So for example, if you have 100 visitors to your site and 50 of them make a purchase, that's a 50% conversion rate. So a 50% conversion rate would be amazing and you honestly probably don't need any of the advice here in this webinar. <laughs> but the average conversion rate for an e-commerce store is 2.63%. It's actually ris risen just a little bit uh, in 2020 and slightly increasing conversion rates have been a trend that we've seen kind of just as shoppers become more familiar with buying online and e-commerce businesses are really focusing more and spending more time testing and improving their conversion rates in just their sites overall. So if 2.63% is the average conversion rate across e-commerce stores, what should your conversion goal be? We kind of like to set a goal of around 4% or so. Um, of course, it really depends on your specific business and where you're starting from. But the top 25% of e-commerce stores are converting at like 5.31% or higher. So if you can get to that 4%, you're really in pretty good shape and it's a really pretty healthy conversion rate. So the real question, right, is how do you get from that 2% average to the healthier, even higher 4% conversion rate. Some of it depends on your industry and your market, right? But a good amount of it is within your control and depends a lot on the choices you make with your website and your design. And one of the first and really the easiest steps we recommend is looking at your site and making sure you aren't doing anything that could actually negatively be impacting your site's conversion rate. So you kind of want to fix these things that could be causing lower conversion rates first. So that's really what we're going to be looking at today, mistakes that could be taking place on your site and how you can fix those to boost your site's conversions and ultimately your sales. So let's take a look. The first mistake, and it's a major one, is not having a mobile responsive design. In 2021, this is a must have for having a healthy conversion rate across your site. Let's take a look at why. In a world where more than half of all global web traffic comes from mobile devices, it is crucial that your site is built with mobile friendliness in mind. 
This means your design must adapt seamlessly from the desktop experience to a tablet or mobile device. So for example, if someone visits your site on a mobile device, but it takes too long for pictures to load or they have to zoom to read text, chances are they're going to leave your site and not come back. Responsive designs allow for content to be viewed quicker and more clearly, therefore providing an easy shopping experience that is more likely to result in sales. If you want to stay on Google's good side, investing in a responsive design is critical. So back in 2015, Google updated their algorithm, making mobile friendliness a ranking factor in mobile Google search results. Since then, Google has only continued to prioritize mobile friendly websites as mobile usage continues to increase. So this means in order to rank higher on Google, your site must be responsive. And if your site isn't mobile friendly, you're losing ground in search engine results and potentially losing sales simply because you're not delivering a good user experience to mobile users. We've seen real results with clients of ours who have gone responsive. So for example, health food brand Skinny Shirataki Noodles saw a 487% increase in mobile conversions and a whopping 74% increase in revenue after getting a responsive design. I personally was the designer who worked with this client and it was very satisfying to see the results they were able to achieve simply by modernizing their website design in a way that is more mobile friendly and easy to use. So now you've learned about how a non-responsive design could be hurting your conversions and you may be thinking, well, I have a non-responsive website now. What do I do to fix that? And well, one way is by choosing a responsive theme. There are so many themes available that are already designed and coded to be responsive that will look great on all devices and set you on the right path. This option is probably the easiest and quickest way to go responsive since the design is already made and only requires you to plug in your content as needed. However, if you're interested in a more in-depth option, a custom responsive design is your best bet. Working with a designer who will get to know your personalized business needs and craft a responsive design with best practices in mind is a great way to make sure that all of your needs are met in the most efficient way possible. Let's wrap up mistake number one by addressing three items that make a good responsive design. Item number one is having an intuitive navigation. So basically just making sure that your navigation is easily identifiable and accessible at any point during the shopping experience. The most common e-commerce solution is the hamburger menu, which is represented by an icon made up of three horizontal lines and has become widely recognized as a menu or a navigation symbol. Next, make sure that the content that is most important is placed higher on the page and that content that is not as valuable is pushed further down the page. Since the mobile experience compared to desktop is more focused with a limited amount of space, establishing a hierarchy will help visitors easily move through your site. So for example, placing your most popular category promotions at a larger size near the top of the page and other promotions at smaller sizes further down the page. Um, which actually leads us to the last item, which is having optimized images. So not only is load speed a ranking Google factor, but 40% of consumers expect a web page to load in two seconds or less. And the way a web page is coded has a part in image optimization, but there are tools available online to help. Okay, so having a responsive design is definitely a big one, and it's a really good place to start to increase your site's conversions if you don't have a responsive design already. But besides for not having a responsive design, the next mistake we see that can really tank conversion rates is not having clear, well-defined call to actions throughout your website. Luckily though, this is a pretty easy one to fix, so let's take a look. Call to actions are essentially just buttons, links, and text that grab your customer's attention and pull them through your purchase funnel. A call to action makes it clear to potential customers which actions to take next, and they help remove friction in turning your site visitors into purchasers. There can be multiple call to actions or multiple paths a customer can take on a page, like on your homepage, for example. So a big, often overlooked benefit of call to action buttons is actually reducing decision fatigue. 
So a customer not knowing what to do essentially, you never want your customers asking what they should do next, what steps should they take. It's much better to show them and guide them and clear calls to action are a really good way of doing that. So here's an example of a site we designed for FR Depot. And in this example here shown, we've removed all the call to action buttons and links. So you can still see things like their titles, um, images, and you can probably guess that a lot of these are clickable and they'll probably take you somewhere, but it's definitely not as clear as it should be, right? You don't want customers to be guessing what to do to try to figure out what to do next. Now here's the same site with all the call to actions added back in. Now you can much more clearly see what to click and what to do next, right? The large bright red shop now buttons, they help guide their customers to the categories and products, moving them closer to the purchasing, right? Which is the ultimate goal, get their customer from the homepage to the category product pages into purchase. So using these call to actions help guide them down that path. And clear calls to action really do make a difference. So when we redesigned Bariatric Direct's website, we had a really strong focus on creating clear calls to action and really kind of optimizing every step of their purchase funnel. And when we did that, they saw a 360% increase in conversions. So clarity, like having that clear path and clearly defined call to actions really can make a difference in your bottom line of your business. So if you don't have clear call to actions, which can negatively be impacting your conversion rate, how do you go about fixing that? Well, it can be pretty simple, really. I mean, if you think about it, just simply adding call to action buttons and links where you need them. In one place we see call to actions missing a lot is on home pages. So a good rule of thumb is that if it's linked, it should probably have some sort of call to action. It could be a button or it could be a text link that says shop now, but you definitely want to have clear call to actions throughout your homepage and really throughout different main pages of your site. So giving your customers these cues is super important in getting them to your product pages and ultimately making that purchase. And so speaking of home pages and product pages, another page that's often overlooked is adding call to action buttons to your category pages. So you can actually even have customers add products directly to their cart from your category pages, skipping the product page altogether. And this is often an overlooked tactic that can increase conversions by saving your customers an extra step. So pretty much anytime you can save a customer an additional step, it's a good thing. It reduces the number of steps that they need to take to make that purchase, thus making it easier and quicker to make a purchase. And the color that you choose for your call to actions can play a major role in determining how clearly they stand out, how effective those calls to action really are. So we always recommend choosing a color that matches or complements your brand, but it's also important to make sure it grabs your customer's attention because that's the point of these call to actions. Uh, and one way to do this is to kind of choose a color that contrasts directly with your primary brand color. So in this example from Paris Farmers Union, the bright orange call to action buttons directly contrast with the green color from their logo. So this kind of opposite color approach helps ensure that the calls to actions are attention grabbing, right? They stand out. Um, we also use this call to action orange color sparingly on Paris Farmer Union's design so that when it is used, it really does get noticed. So you can kind of pick one main color for your call to actions and then try to really only use that color for this purpose, right? To draw customers' attention. The next mistake involves one of, if not the most essential element in terms of directing shoppers to your category and product pages. If your navigation system isn't concise, Easy, organized and easy to access, the following tips can help get you on the right path. Your website's navigation has a huge impact on sales and conversions, right? So if visitors can't figure out where to find what they're looking for, they'll leave. So ensuring that your navigation is designed to help shoppers find what they want on both desktop and mobile experiences is sure to result in an improved conversion rate. 
One way to do this is by drawing focus to your navigation. So use a color within your branding that contrasts the other content on the page or style the text in a distinct manner so the navigation area stands out. Also, try to avoid grouping categories under generic labels like products or shop and list them separately instead for easy accessibility. For example, a former client Posh House transformed the way their shoppers navigate their store by implementing a mega menu. This multi-column menu combined with the addition of icons to represent each of their categories helped guide shoppers down a shopping path more quickly and easily. This particular client had over a thousand products in their inventory, so organizing their navigation in a clear and concise manner was very important. So if your website navigation is disorderly or unorganized, how can it be fixed? And a great starting point is to consider what types of links you're storing in your navigation. So prioritize your shoppable pages like category pages by placing them within your main navigation. Since your goal is to funnel visitors to the most important pages for conversions and sales, directing visitors to those pages can have a big impact on your business's bottom line. So for example, on Eastern Leaf's design, we can see they've organized their navigation menu into several main shopping categories, followed by other informational page links that are important to their business. Links like About Us, FAQ, or Contact are generally recommended to go outside of your main navigation, either elsewhere in the header to ensure they remain easy to access, or down in the footer where informational links are most common anyway. Um, but if you discover you need more space to organize your navigation, implementing a menu system like a mega menu, as seen here, can help to do so in an intuitive and easy to use way. All right, so Jessica just discussed some ways you can reduce confusion and help guide your customers down the purchasing funnel through your navigation, but inevitably customers will still have questions. The ultimate goal, of course, is to reduce these questions through FAQs, chatbots, on-site live chat, or even phone and email support. Because really, almost nothing stops a customer from completing a purchase more than not having all their questions answered or not being clear on what they're actually purchasing. So mistake number four that could be tanking your conversion rate is not having or having hard to find customer support. And Zendesk, if you're not familiar, uh, is a customer service and chat software company. And they surveyed almost 2000 consumers about their shopping habits and found that 84% of them said that customer service was a key factor in deciding whether or not to make a purchase. And that's really quite astonishing and astounding if you think about it. Uh, and it really illustrates the importance of customer support. You know, even if it was just like 50%, that's still a huge percentage of customers that value customer service and use it to decide whether or not they're going to purchase or not. And if you don't have customer support outlets for these customers to use, a good portion of them might not make a purchase or even worse, you know, they might not ever return to your site and you might lose them as customers for good. And a great way to kind of get started on identifying if this mistake, mistake exists on your site is to kind of look at your site as though you're a visitor visiting your site for the first time with fresh eyes. So ask yourself these questions. You know, if I were a customer, where would I go to ask a question? Are there common questions we always get? And, you know, are you doing a good job of having those answers to those questions found in, you know, front and center on your website? Really better yet, even if you could literally ask your real customers or a friend or colleague or someone who's part of your target demographic these questions, you can kind of conduct your own small little usability test or study. And um, it's a really good practice just to get in the habit of asking customers questions about your site because you inevitably learn new things that you've just become blind to or just don't notice because you're so familiar with your site. So I highly recommend kind of speaking to your customers or doing some sort of small usability or focus groups if you can. So just through talking through that, you might already know that you have some holes in your customer support strategy and hopefully, you know, you understand the benefits 
of having one. So let's look at how you can go about fixing any kind of mistakes or challenges you're having here. And one of the most common recommendations that we give is putting your contact information clearly in the header of your website, up there near your navigation logo. We, re we kind of recommend this for two main reasons. One, it's on just about every page of your site, right? So no matter if a customer is on your home page, category page, product page, that contact information is right there. They can easily get to it when they're having that question or that thought or they need to reach out to you. So that's definitely a great place to keep this information. And then another reason is that the header up here near the navigation is just, it's a common place customers look for this type of information. Customers have pretty much been trained through different sites who do customer support really well to kind of look for this important information up here in the header of your site. And kind of the next thing we recommend is giving some love to your standard contact page, All right, It might be a page that you maybe don't pay much attention to or haven't edited or updated in a while. So take some time and really look at your contact page, put answers to common questions you receive and give your customers different ways to contact you, right? So typically some customers want to call, others want to email, others want to just fill out a simple form and have you reach back out to them. But by providing some different avenues and different ways, they get to choose how you contact them, which kind of puts them front, you know, puts what they need first and allows them to kind of get comfortable and reach out to you directly. And just kind of think of your contact page as something that's always evolving, right? As you learn more things about your customers, you can add more questions, more answers, more information there. And then some data that we came across that we found kind of surprising was a recent study that ICMI did. Um, and ICMI, they're a leader in the contact center space. And they found that live chat has actually become the leading digital contact method for online consumers. So they actually found that 46% of consumers prefer live chat compared to just 29% for email and only 16% for social media. So live chats, it's definitely something we're recommending more and more and definitely something we recommend considering for your site. And if you want to pursue having live chat on your site, just about any embeddable live chat software at this point can be added to your Volusion store. So there's a bunch of different options out there for you to kind of look into and consider. Lastly, closing us out with mistake number five is the absence of social proof and trust elements. Customer reviews are just one example of social proof that can be very powerful in influencing whether or not somebody makes a purchase from your store. Shoppers want to feel comfortable and confident in their purchasing decisions. So integrating ways to build that trust can have an impact on your conversions. If your website is missing some of these valuable tools, don't worry, we'll get into ways you can incorporate them into your website. And before we get into it further, you may be wondering, well, what is social proof anyway? And basically, it's the psychological notion that people will follow the actions of others under the assumption that was the correct behavior. So in regards to e-commerce, shoppers are so heavily influenced by the actions and recommendations of others that social proof is key to burst boosting conversion rates. For example, studies show that 92% of online consumers look at a product review before purchasing. And reviews are just one way to present social proof. Uh, other ways are through endorsements like social media influencers, for example, um, and user generated content like customer photos and media logos. Like if your products have been featured in any reputable publications, uh, placing those logos on your website is a great way to build credibility. So we've just established that shoppers rely on others' feedback before making a purchase, but why is that exactly? Well, it's for a few reasons. For one, shoppers are skeptical. If potential customers don't trust your brand, they won't follow through with a purchase. So user generated content is so valuable that in fact, 70% of people say they trust consumer opinions posted online. Curating that user generated content and displaying it on your site reassures potential customers, which means more sales for your business. On top of that, shoppers are social, right? So social media apps allow them 
to find the opinions of others practically immediately, so much so that seeking out those opinions has become a key step in the buyer's journey. And finally, shoppers are curious. Trust Pulse, which is a marketing platform, found that customers would spend 31% more on a business with good reviews. So encouraging customers to learn about your products through user-generated content like reviews and photos is important. Even with a long established place in the DIY food industry, our client, the sausage maker, sought out to promote their brand and attract new customers through social efforts. Strategies put into place by our team included incorporating user generated content into their content calendar and partnering with influencers and bloggers. These strategies, along with some other efforts, resulted in a 70% increase in social conversions, which really just says a lot about how consumers rely on the voices of your customers. Now, what are some ways you can add social proof and trust factors to your site? Well, fortunately, there are some easy steps that you can take. First, and I'm sure you could guess, is by highlighting customer reviews. It's clear by now that reviews carry a lot of influence. So placing those reviews on your homepage and on your product pages where they're easily seen is a great way to not only tell shoppers your credible business, but that your products are worth purchasing. Another way is by showcasing trust badges and seals. Uh, a study in 2017 actually found that 19% of lost sales were due to concerns about website security. So to avoid any potential missed sales, make sure you have a trust badge on your website. Oftentimes these trust badges come with security features meant to keep credit card and personal information safe. A great place to store your badges and seals is in the footer of your website, since typically that area is visible on every page of your website. Um, but sometimes if it's appropriate, they can go in the header of your website if the design of your header allows. Uh, and you may even already be familiar with some trust badges like Norton, McAfee, and Better Business Bureau badges. And last but not least is by actually using a third party social proof application. Nowadays, it's easier than ever to get social proof to work for you, especially with the right tools. So Yapo and Target Bay are just two examples of online platforms that can help improve trust specifically by showcasing your customer reviews. So there you have it. The five most common conversion killing mistakes we see e-commerce stores making. Um, you know, hopefully you're coming away from this webinar with a list of at least a few items that you want to fix and adjust to boost your conversions. I definitely think about a responsive design first if you don't have one. You know, that's a big one. And then you can kind of work on the other items and fixing the other errors or mistakes kind of as you're building out that new responsive site and design. So everything from making sure you have clear call to actions to, you know, making it concise and well, um, well organized navigation menu to having those social proof and trust badges. Hopefully there's some things here that you'll be able to implement and kind of see how they improve your conversions and sales of your site. So that's about it. You know, thanks for joining us. And if you ever need any help, you can always find us at growwithstudio.com. We're always happy to discuss your site with you or answer any follow-up questions here from this webinar that you might have. If anything was unclear, let us know. You know, we're happy to kind of give some more information where we're, we're kind of e-commerce nerds. So we love this stuff. Um, and yeah, so Volusion will be announcing the winner of the free conversion audit to one of you lucky attendees in the coming days. So be on the lookout for an email about that. Otherwise, you know, reach out to us if you have any questions or need anything. And thanks for joining us and just enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.